I got another one of these dollar store birdhouses and we got my kitchen trash can. Let's see what we can do. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. And about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, I released a video where I made this little foam birdhouse. The video just absolutely blew up. You all absolutely loved that video and I'm so excited that you did because I really enjoyed making it. But the one thing that I did notice that was kind of a theme throughout the comments was that I used XPS foam when I built this. XPS foam, for those who don't know, is like construction foam used for insulating walls. It's like hardboard kind of. Whereas that does help to make really, really cool textures, some people just don't have access to that. So that made me think, well, one, not only do I have an extra one of these that I can try to make, but also I liked the interesting challenge of me trying to make something like this I don't want it to be exactly like this, but something like this, but to do it out of materials that I have here around the house, with the exception of paint and tools and stuff, because I'm not gonna include that. I'm gonna try to make another one of these birdhouse houses with just junk that I have lying around the house. And I'm gonna see how close to this I can get. Will it be great? Hopefully. Do we know that for sure? No, which is why you're here to watch this video. Although, if I'm gonna to be totally honest, you've probably seen the thumbnail and know that it probably turned out or didn't. This intro uh, is going worse than I wanted it to. <laughs> Let's dive into getting this thing prepped up and ready to be built upon. So getting started, I knocked the bottom off like I did before and I cut off the little pegs. And then lastly, I used hot glue and Ego's box to fill in the bird hole gaps. Nothing fancy there. The thing that I do know that I want to do is I want this to be visually different from the last one. So with this one, I did a little side piece over here. I did basically the front flat and then the back, the chimney there. So with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a cardboard structure that comes out the front here so that when this one is setting like this and this one is setting like this, the front will stick out here. I will check back in with y'all after I get something that looks, you know, reasonably acceptable. So with hot glue to brace the insides, I took my corrugated cardboard here and I ended up making the front piece that will be the extension that sticks off of the front of the house here. The next thing that I've got to do is get this glued in place obviously onto the house, which shouldn't be too difficult. And then I'll work on putting the overhang on. To get the peak of the roof done, what I did was I took thicker strips of cardboard to make like a fake peak up in there and I glued that in place, uh, obviously all using hot glue, which then allowed me to cut thinner strips of the Ego cardboard, this is just like super thin stuff, to actually make the surface of the roof and now it has that fantasy peak to it. The next thing that I've got to tackle is this thing, which again is super, super straight. And if you remember from this one, what I want is for it to swoop out there. So I I'm not sure yet. I think what I'm gonna to try to do is take that thicker corrugated cardboard and I'm going to make it be its full thickness at the bottom and then maybe like cut it to shape so that it gets thin up here or maybe just add little triangles down here, that might work. Okay, so here's the thing, that did not work. And the reason it did not work is because as I would cut the corrugated cardboard, particularly when it got really thin, it would smash and then lose all shape and structural integrity and stuff. So that didn't work, but I did find a solution. What I did was I took and cut up my egg carton Right, I started cutting this up and I cut it into strips. And then what I did was I cut a little thin strip and then that thin strip got glued on and then I shaved a little bit off. And then I glued another small piece onto the end of that and shaved that off. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and sand that down so that it gives me a nice smooth transition. You can kind of see that on this one. And then the last thing that I do is just like I did on this guy, I'm going to take 
uh, that foam and I'm going to make these strips which go on the outside which will look like my timbers. I'll walk you through me doing this side here. So step one is to get my little piece like this and hot glue that on right there. Then I take my next little piece and hot glue that on to the other one. Now, if you notice, it's got this little like angle flat, angle flat, which is not gonna be really good for getting a nice smooth transition. So what I'm gonna do here is break out a nail file. Uh, and at this step, you should definitely be wearing face protection because breathing in this foam is like just hella toxic. But what you're gonna do is take and file those edges down until it looks like that. And it's a nice smooth transition from the flat area to there. Now getting these strips cut and on there is as tricky as it was on the last build. So what we're going to try to do here is take our strip and we're going to just put it on there and mark it. And that looks like this. And then we're gonna cut that out and that will fit on our piece just like that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that glued in place and with that glued on there and that piece trimmed up, all I need to do is just add the piece on the other side here and it'll look just like that. Easy peasy. Actually, that's a lie. It's not, it's not easy peasy, but I found a way to make it simpler than it was seeming when I first needed to do it. All right, moving on. Okay, so let's talk about what's next. So the next thing that I need to do is start getting the bottom part of the build finished up. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to end up cutting all of my egg cartons up into flat areas. Now I took the time to make sure to do that off camera because it's just a lot of cutting stuff up. But once I had all that done, I realized that I don't think I had quite enough. Maybe I would, but I'd be cutting it really, really close to the edge. So instead of going out and buying more, which kind of feels like it would defeat the purpose of this whole build and trying to not spend a whole bunch of extra money. I just cut up some strips of XPS foam that I'm gonna glue on to the bottom that are the exact same thickness and general size of the egg carton. So what you could do is you could save up egg cartons and then do the exact same thing that I did. The way that I did that is I cut out strips of the foam and then I'm just gonna glue that onto the bottom to make vertical Planking. This is really easy to do. Obviously cut it to shape, but then you're going to drag lines with your X-Acto knife through it, widen those with a pencil, and lastly texture them to look like wood using a wire brush. I just realized that I glued this on here and did not film it. Ah, the wonders of YouTube filming and let's, let's, let's try this again. <laughs> oh boy. With that said, now what I have to do is get to the hard work of doing timbers everywhere, and that's just gonna take forever. So what I'm gonna do is check in with you all after I get that done, and I'll show you what that progress looks like. So just like the last build, we're gonna do our timbers in three separate phases. The first is gonna be a quarter inch timber, and that's gonna be the heaviest looking timber that we have. I'm gonna use that to do things like separate the floors as well as support the roof. The second phase is gonna be a 3 16 inch timber. That's gonna go in places like supporting those big heavy quarter inch timbers as well as in specific places all around the model. Those are going to look just a little bit thicker than our third phase, which are going to be eighth inch thick timbers and I'm going to use those to do all of the accents and details. Once I have that done, the piece is already looking a lot better and if you're ever making these timbers for yourself and you're worried about where to put them, just improvise. That's all I'm doing. I'm just coming up with a place that I think looks cool and placing a timber. If you really want to make sure that you're doing it right, you can get online and look up pictures of houses that look like this and just mimic what they do. But for the most part, just improvise and what you come up with will look just fine. The next thing that I need to do is figure out what I'm doing for the second story. And the second story, I've decided I'm going to do some kind of stucco. Now this is where it gets interesting. Normally what I would do here is use tile grout to fill all of the gaps, but in this particular challenge, I'm trying to do it for as cheap as possible. Another way that I've seen some people do it is sand and PVA glue, but I'm actually wondering if I can come up with a household item that would allow me to do the same thing. And bear with me here, because here's the idea. Regular old table salt. 
I mean, it seems like sand, right? So then I guess what I'm gonna do is try and take it and mix it with the PVA glue to make a paste and then put the paste into the areas like I would with tile grout. This is either gonna be horrendous or it's gonna be great and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. So uh, I'm gonna try to do this with some table salt. <laughs> Okay, so as a smart human, I decided to do a test run before I put this on the piece, and thank goodness that I did. Here is what we got with the test run. It like literally instantly turned into like, like foam or something. Like, I don't know if you can see, it's like not sticky anymore. Weird, weird, weird. Always do trial runs. Also, this feels like some kind of like wacky science experiment gone wrong. Uh, back to the drawing board. Okay, new plan, since the salt is not gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna try paper mache. That seems like something that everybody could probably do. So I'm gonna take toilet paper and I'm gonna mix that with water and PVA glue. I'm gonna turn that basically into a paper mache paste, and then I'm hoping I can put that into the areas and fill it like I would with the tile grout to make my stucco. Uh, this, is a, this is an episode of firsts for the channel, and actually not being funny. I don't care how long you've been doing this. There's always gonna be a time to try something new and learn something new, and if you mess up your little foam house, you're gonna make another little foam house, so. <laughs> Just try stuff and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it'll make foam for some reason out of PVA glue and salt. So not only have I not ever made paper mache before, like in my whole life, I've never made paper mache before. I've certainly never made toilet paper paper mache. On top of all of that, I'm just guessing here. So this is water, toilet paper, and PVA glue. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just fill the gaps with this stuff and uh, hopefully I got it right. Let's see. So it is the next morning and holy expletive. This did two things. One, it went way better than I thought it was going to go. I have never done paper mache or anything like that before, but I just couldn't believe how much this does look like stucco, particularly for somebody who wants to spend zero dollars in materials. Like obviously you have to buy the Elmer's glue, but I feel like everybody kind of has a little bit of Elmer's glue lying around somewhere, but just mixing water, toilet paper, and PVA glue together, it blew me away as to how good this looks. The second thing is it took absolutely forever to dry. I had to wait a whole 24 hours for this stuff to set up and I'm honestly not still 100% secure that it's dry. Maybe I put too much water and I should have put more glue in. Maybe that would have helped, but uh, other than that, wow, this was so neat. Another thing that is actually super worth mentioning is that I still have some in the cup that I used and I have just saran wrap over the top. So I kind of wonder, maybe this won't super dry out super quick. So what's next? Well, the next thing I need to do is shingles and I'm gonna use my paper plate shingles technique. If you want to learn how I do this, you can check out this video. I'll throw the thumbnail up on the screen here and be sure to link the video, of course, down in the description. But the only difference that I'm going to make is that I'm not texturing them to look like wood shingles this time because I did a wooden roof on my previous build. This time I'm gonna to try to do like a slate shingle thing. So all I did was just cut up my paper plates into my shingles and then I'm gonna start gluing those down on all of my roofs. I'm gonna get that knocked out. I'll check back in with you after that. And uh, we'll be almost finished getting this piece put together. 
So by my count, we have three projects that we have to get finished before we have the whole thing done. So the first one is I need to finish off the roof. Now, normally I would use XPS for this, but I wanna make a rafter beam that goes across the top of the building. So the first thing I have to do here is trim off the top of my shingles to make a flat area. And then I'm going to pull out my extruded polystyrene, EPS, I think, <laughs> Foam, and that's gonna be the stuff that you get out of packaging material. This is something that you can get as like protection on corners of furniture and things like that. And more specifically, the one that I picked was the one with the tightest possible grain. This is gonna be the firmest feeling packing foam that you can get. And you can see between these two examples, one has the real big puffs, this one has the real thin stuff. So I'm doing that so that it's going to act the most like XPS foam. I just cut it to shape and then drag pencils across the whole thing to texture it. I don't think that you can use a plastic or metal wire brush because I think it's just gonna rip all of the little foam balls off, but the pencil worked absolutely great here. And the more you mark, the better texture you're gonna get. Just make sure to use a sharp pencil. With that ready, I hot glued it in place and it looks absolutely great. The second job that I have to do is getting the door all crafted up. And I'm gonna do this the exact same way that I did it in my first birdhouse build, except the only difference is I'm gonna be using this egg carton foam instead. So it's already cut to thickness. I just need to cut it to shape. I will say the one takeaway that I do get from working with this egg carton foam is it just textures differently than XPS foam. I'm not sure better or worse, different is just the way that I would describe it. And I think if I started on egg carton foam, XPS foam would feel weird and since XPS is what I'm used to. The egg carton foam felt a little weird here, but once I had that all crafted, then it was time to get to paint. I painted it. <laughs> I hate painting. I hate it. It's my least favorite part of the process, and I see so many people online who are like, painting is my favorite thing. I, I love painting. I hate the crafting part. I can't wait to give the painting. I do not identify with those people at all, but... I really, really like the way that it turned out. And I think that kind of comes down to the same thing that everybody says. It's do the parts of the process that you don't like so you get the end result and you're happy. I just wish that the part that I didn't like came first because it would make it a lot easier to have the stuff to look forward to to get to do later. Anyway, I'll tell you what the thing that I'm the most shocked by. It is the paper mache stucco. That turned out so much better than I thought it was going to turn out. I just absolutely can't believe the result that I got out of that. And it dried pretty rock solid too. So that's something that I can definitely mess with in the future and maybe use that in other ways as well. I don't know what the actual dollar and cents amount is that I spent on this build, but I will say I did not buy a single material for it other than the birdhouse. And then obviously I think I can get nickel and dimed for the craft paint and the paint brushes and like that kind of stuff. But all of the things that I used, I either pulled out of the garbage can or I could have pulled out of the garbage can. It was something that was just kind of hanging out here at the house. And if you were diligent and collected materials, you could do the exact same thing and end up with a build for basically just the cost of the little birdhouse. You might even be able to take the birdhouse totally out of the equation and just make the substructure out of cardboard. And then you'd have a build that was just all trash and it would look very similar to this, I would think. Just the birdhouse saves you a step. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I really, really enjoyed making it. And now I have two pieces that look I think surprisingly different for them being the same basic substructure. What more can you ask for? Do all of the YouTube stuff that helps the channel out, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. That's actually the number one way that you can help out a small YouTube channel. But that's all I've got for this week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you. But seriously, I mean, this was in the trash can and this was in the trash can. Both of those things are great crafting materials. I think I also have uh, some paper plates, but the paper plates have food on them. So I'll probably end up using paper plates, but I'll maybe do, maybe do clean ones. So let's, let's continue.